G'day, welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different today. Look, it's a MasterCard UPS. This is a, a Siemens, I think it's pronounced Siemens. Look, spelt Siemens, but it's pronounced Siemens, I, I understand. This is a uninterruptible power supply, but it's not a cheap one. It's actually quite an expensive one. It's a thousand VA, which means it's got quite a bit of power. And this has been sitting under my desk running 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the last 25 years. And today I'm going to take it apart because the fan has got noisy and the batteries need replacing. So I thought you might like to come along with me on a journey as to what 30 years, almost 30 years of, of electronics that's been working every day looks like. So this stuff comes from an era when stuff used to be fixable. You know, these days it's a, it's a throwaway society. We just throw our smartphones and our computers and everything else. When it wears out, when it stops, when it's superseded, we just throw it away. Uh, so we don't fix stuff anymore, even though there's a really strong right to repair movement now underway. Most of the time we just, you know, replace it because electronics moves so quickly that before you know it, the next product's better, faster, cheaper, more efficient. So there seems to be little point in repairing some stuff. But this, this is a bit different. This, as I say, it's, it's run for 25 years without, without a fault and that's pretty damn impressive for any piece of gear and I wouldn't swap this for a new one for all the tea in China because it is so well made and it's not like a, a lot of the UPS's on the market today are not actually a UPS they're what's called a standby power supply that means that most of the time they just sit there doing nothing except keeping their batteries trickle charged and they only kick in when the power goes out so basically that's when they start generating mains voltage to replace the power voltage that's disappeared. Screech! Oh, there we go. Um, and so there's always a little bit of a, a gap in supply, a little bit of a twitch when the power supply kicks in. These are a full-time uninterruptible power supply, which means, just to walk you through what goes on in here, we have the mains voltage comes in here, it gets rectified, and turn into DC. Some of that voltage is then used to charge the batteries, which live on the other side. Several, three sealed lead acid batteries with lots of dust. Yet some of the voltage goes to charging them, but most of the voltage, well, most of the power then goes into a, an inverter. So it goes from, in this case, 230 volts down to 36 volts, and then an inverter steps it up from 36 volts back up to 230 volts, where it goes out the output jacks on the other side here, these jacks down here. And that means that it's always turning AC into DC and back into AC. So when the input voltage fails, if the mains goes out for any reason, all it does is basically the batteries kick in and so there's no interruption in the supply because it's already turning DC into AC so the batteries just take over providing the DC if the mains input fails. That means they're a much uh, more reliable, well, not reliable, you don't get the glitches that you'd get with a normal UPS and one of the cheapy ones. So there you go and look at it, it is built like a little tank. Massive amounts of heat sinking here with thermal protection, this is a little thermal sensor that if things get too hot it will shut the thing down. Um, good quality components everywhere. Who makes those? Oh yeah, these are they Nippon Chemicon. Yeah, Nippon Chemicon caps. So the good quality components. You would expect that from a leading brand like Siemens. Um, and big bits, big parts everywhere. There is a lot of through hole components, which means it's repairable. You can replace stuff. And a lot of these things are standard off the shelf components. No special made to spec devices that will only be available from the manufacturer. There's a lot of a lot of stuff in there because this is a pretty schmick. UPS. Look, we've got a main board down here and we've got this little daughter board up here that has all sorts of stuff in it. Um, fantastic. So as I say, the reason I've got it here today is twofold. This fan at the back is now making a noise and I don't want the noise because it makes it very hard to work in a room where the fan's screeching at you. And also I need to replace this sealed lead acid battery. So let's take a look at those. These ones are about four years old. I think so they're due for replacement. I noticed that the, the that doesn't last long when the power goes out now. So they've obviously lost a fair bit of capacity. And as you can see, it has three of these batteries, not like the little cheapy power supplies that only run for five minutes. It's got three batteries. So there's quite a bit of energy store in here. This typically will run my computer systems for over an hour if the mains goes out. A thousand VA, you know, that's a, that's a lot of power. So you need a lot of battery storage to provide that. And of course, these are just the industry standard sealed lead acid cells. 
pseudo acid batteries which are 12 volts. I don't know what the voltage is on these but they're probably low because they're all worn out. Let's have a look at my multimeter and quite often it's just one battery goes because these are all wired in series so if one battery gets a bit weak then the whole system is weak so let's have a look. What is this one? Uh, this one measures that's 13.2 volts that's not too bad but it's certainly not fully charged they usually float at about 14 I think. Um, let me just remove some of these leads see what the next one is. The next one is yeah the next one's 8.65 so this one here she's kaput. I could get away with changing one but why would you? I mean let's face it we want to we want to uh, replace all the batteries at the same time because generally they all tend to fail at the same time and the other ones won't be far behind so let me just take these out. Uh, sometimes you can pick up these batteries quite cheap online because a lot of companies simply cycle them in and out of uh, or cycle them in through alarms and so forth so after 14 months or 12 months they just replace them whether they're tired or not. Let's take this one out of here. All right let's measure the voltage on this one. This one's probably also not too bad. No that's 10 volts so, so they're, they're pretty sad these batteries not much good for anything except boat anchors. Um, here you go so I'll get some more of these and um, replace. Now interesting to note that there's been a leak in here that's probably from one of those batteries certainly no other components on the other side. Um, that's a bit worrying so you always buy good batteries I can't um, is there a bit of a leak here. You can see this has had a bit of it's a bit of crustiness around here. Maybe this battery has leaked a bit. Um, I, this was just a no brand that I bought. I'll get a better quality for the next time. Um, so what I'm going to do is blow it out with the old compressed air because you can see you get a lot of dust building up on these. It's constantly sucking air through with the fan. So if there's any if you've got it in a carpeted room or anywhere where you do a little bit of cleaning you're going to get this sort of stuff building up. So it really pays. I do from time to time clean out the grills on this thing. It has a little grill in the front here. You can see it's already clogged up with dust and uh, you want to keep this cleaned regularly because otherwise the heat is one of the things that kills the batteries. If they get too hot inside it will kill the batteries real quick because although they're sealed lead acids they, they still tend to as you see they will still vent a little bit if they get too hot and this is probably what's happened this middle battery's got a bit warm and it spewed some of its guts out which is so I'll clean that up make sure I put a bit of um, neutralizer on there but apart from that for 30 or well, 25 years, I mean I think they made about 30 years ago, 25 years it's still looking in pretty good nick I've got to say. So that's what it looks like inside a piece of gear that's been running 24-7 for 25 years and still goes, still goes. Now I will take the fan out and I will see if I can lube it because these fans are, I think it's it's a DC fan, I, I might have a spare fan I'm not sure, I don't know what voltage it is and I um, I guess we'll find out but I might try and rescue it, take it out. What you can often do is just take the little covers off the bearings, squirt them full of oil and because is there any slop in the bearings? No the bearings actually seem pretty good so just making a noise I'll lube it up see if that fixes it. There you go little journey into my UPS.